Excuse me, madam. Good afternoon. As yeah, we wait for, yeah, as we wait for the other, I, I have a question. Um, Go some ahead. Weeks back, uh, some weeks back, uh, I'd uh, talked about us planting the mangroves, right? You told me that uh, you were to talk to Dr. Tamo, so I'm encouraging uh, any progress. Uh, say again, please. Sorry? Say again, repeat your question. I'm saying some weeks back, I, uh, I had uh, communicated, we had talked about how we can engage in mangrove planting at, at the coast. So that the, then you told me, then you told me you're going to engage Dr. Tamo. So I'm inquiring with any feedback so far. Okay. Uh, sorry, I haven't, but I'm trying to see whether there's a group that may soon be replanting. Uh, okay. So um, I'm still waiting for a word from them. I can I may not be able to give you a word until I get a confirmation from them. So just give me, just keep reminding me, because I have okay. it in mind, and then I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. So, so the groups which are they, they are they are not yet starting because it would be better to work with a community. So, but I'll also talk with Dr. Tamo whether he, he knows any community that's doing any restoration or planting. And then, but just keep reminding me. So, so. Okay. So, so I think, uh, okay, let's give about five more people time to join and then we start. Okay, so we are going to, to start. Uh, in today's lecture, we are actually sort of winding up uh, in this course. And uh, what uh, all that we've been learning, uh, land is planning. Uh, at the end of the day, the overall goal was to point us to the fact that land has very many uses in terms of competing uses. Land is finite. Uh, and land, some land is good for some uses, but not for others. And what we've been doing in all these uh, topics that we have studied from topic one up to topic eight, we've just been looking, how can we best use land? What principles should we use? Uh, what happens when we use land as human beings? What are the repercussions? And uh, 
Uh, I think uh, towards the last, um, the last topics, we were looking at landscaping. Just uh, doing the best with the land that you have look uh, good and to also serve other purposes, not just for aesthetic purposes, but to serve other ecological services, including economic services. Because, for example, we said when you landscape an area or land or a home, then the resale value is usually higher as compared to land where no landscaping has taken place, it just has bush growing all over. The resale value is normally very low. So it's all you can look at the economic benefits, the ecological benefits, the social benefits. Uh, all those uh, make uh, land use planning worthwhile. And that's notwithstanding and not forgetting that we are facing challenges today. There is climate change that is doing so much and uh, uh, keeps surprising us. And, and for a case in point, I want to, to, to bring to your attention is the, is the flooding that has been going on in Europe. I don't know whether you, you read international news. And, and Germany has experienced some of the worst flooding, I think, in years. In fact, the, the, the Chancellor, uh, Angela Merkel, said they don't even have a word in German to describe what they are seeing now. After she, she went out to just uh, have a feel of what damage these floods have caused. She looked at the whole thing and she said, this is surreal. So, uh, yeah, she said in German, they don't even have a word to describe such, such a situation. They, they lack a vocabulary for that. And for her, she said, this is a real, it's like, it's a dream. I'm in a dream and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'll wake up and, and see different. But unfortunately, that's not. And, and the only thing I could hear, like, you know, you someone says words, and what she's saying in the background, come on, we need to take, to put climate action as priority. We need to seriously think, we, we need to hurry to, to put climate action into, into force. And not only that, we need to do something. Everybody needs to do something. And because they're saying we haven't experienced such floods. I think so far by the time I was reading the news, uh, over 180 people had died. There were hundreds of people missing. Property had been destroyed. I mean, it just looked, you almost could not believe it. And just because, and they were saying, uh, what she was saying is that uh, probably this, uh, I don't know whether you remember in, in SMR 311, uh, when we were talking about ecological uh, delimitations of sustainable land use. And then we say that uh, there was the issue of, uh, I think the place principle and some natural disasters happening. Um, not regularly, but periodically. Maybe there's a flood that happens every 50 years. Maybe there's an earthquake that happens every 100 years. Maybe there's something cyclical that happens in a particular area. And it's very, very important for, for people to be aware and to plan for it. So, uh, so you can imagine you have done all your land use plans and you know maybe for the next 100 years, uh, we are not expecting a flood. And then a flood comes after 20 years, another one comes after another 40 years. So the regularity of those extreme events becomes regular. They, they just keep, uh, keep happening. They just keep shooting up. And when you least expect them, that is what is happening, that the regularity of the extreme events becomes even more regular. They become more regular. And, and, and when you think you've just, uh, you're done with this kind of damage, another one is just uh, in the offing, it's just about to come. So, uh, so, so that's what I'm saying. When, when you're thinking of land use, and, and yeah, we are, we are making good use of our land, we are zoning our land, we are, we are controlling urban sprawl, we are going for uh, looking at the ecological delimitations and making sure we are obeying the ecological laws as we plan for our land. At the back of our minds, 
let's remember, there are those other things that are happening that unless we, we control them, unless we put in some uh, uh, decisive action concerning them, then uh, all our efforts could actually end up being nothing. So today I want us to reflect. This is a reflective uh, lecture today. And we are going to watch a few videos and we are going to have group discussions and, and, and this for me, the most important thing is to open your eyes. I mean, you're, you're getting out of studenthood, uh, especially for those who do not want to continue with masters and even those who want to continue their masters is much more out there. So my question is, what are you going to be doing for your country? Looking at the challenges we have, knowing purely that our, our counties almost have no land use plans. And even if they are there, they are somewhere buried in reports and forgotten for years. Okay. And yet we continue to suffer. We continue experiencing land grabbing. We continue putting our land into the wrong use, whereas maybe there was a suggested use by which we ignored by not reading the report. Uh, what are you going out there with? Who are you armed with knowledge that can help? start changing things. And we're going to watch some videos of some people doing some very, very basic things in wherever they are to ensure sustainability and to make sure they are taking care of all these factors and all these dynamics that at times uh, make uh, land use very, very difficult or at times just make some land to be, to be um, locked out of some kinds of uses. For example, when land is so degraded, nobody wants to farm because it's really a waste of time. Uh, you put in so much, you get in so little. Uh, nobody probably wants to stay there because in most cases it's unsightly. But uh, do we need to get to that point? And even if we've gotten to that point, uh, there are some people who are doing something somewhere that could inspire us. Yeah, they could inspire us and say, okay, fine. If these people have done this thing, why, why not us? So today, we just uh, summarizing all the lectures. And then, of course, next week, we will, we will have the card. Um, so as I say, today is a reflective lecture. Uh, and we are going to watch videos. We are going to make discussions. And we are going to think because tomorrow is depending on the, the future of, of Kenya is in your hands, it's not in the hands of the politicians. You, you, you are the one with that, uh, with that mandate. The, ma the mandate is in your hands. So wh where are you going to be leading Kenya? Whatever position you take, whether as a politician or whatever it is Who's that you do. Who's ready to catch some so, cool you, you let us know. Can you all see my screen? Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So let's get started. So I want you to be taking notes as we watch these videos because it's on these videos that we'll base our discussions today. Click here to make your theory. <laughs> So our next topic is land resources. Land is very important to us and it is the solid portion of the Earth's surface because human civilization has taken place on the land. I can see your screen. Can you see a slide? High Can you hear now? Score. It provides habitat for most of the flora and fauna. Can you hear? And also, it regulates the water and carbon cycles. It becomes a dumping ground for the solid yeah. and liquid waste. Oh. Yes, but you can't see the video. We can't see the video.
so our next topic is land resources land is very important to us and it is the solid portion of the earth's surface because the land is the basis on the land, on the land. it also fulfills the basic yes. needs of yes. all yes. Yes. such as okay. foods clothes shelters etc it is used in agriculture it acts as a store point for the basic resources like ground water minerals and fossil fuels it also protects from high temperature of earth's core it provides habitat for most of the flora and fauna and also it regulates the water and carbon cycles it becomes a dumping ground for the solid and liquid waste So now let's talk about the soil profile. Soil profile is the different horizons or the layers in the soil, which is having different different uh, colors, textures, root structure, and rock fragments. So depending upon the different compositions, the layers are divided into different parts, and they are the they are the different horizons, uh, named as O, A, E, B, and C layers, and all this is known as soil profile. So let's talk about the first layer, and that is O, a humus or organic layer. This does not contain any soil, and is it is the uppermost layer, and below that there is the top layer, top soil or A layer. So this two layer mostly contains of the of the humus rich, humus which is rich organic material of plants and animals origin. So this is only covered with the plant leaves and leaf litters, needles, twigs or mosses. so this is only layer up to 2 feet a layer or top soil second is e or elevated horizon and this is the leaching layer or uh, this is also called as leaching layer this is up to 10 to 15 feet and it is light in color mainly because of the sands and silt because this contains the large amount of leached materials from the top soil next comes the subsoil that is a b layer and it is from 10 to 30 feet and it contains mainly the clays and minerals like iron aluminum copper etc and the color of this layer changes depending upon the composition of different mineral materials then comes the parent material that is c layer it is from 30 to 48 feet and it is composed of large rocks so it is a big lump of the broken bed rocks so and there is nothing more so everything is rocky there and finally is the bedrock that is r layer it is below 48 feet and it is the deepest soil in the horizon and it is containing only the big rocks continuous mass of bedrock so this is the last layer now let's talk about the function of soil soil is very important for us because it plays a very significant role in our nutrient cycle it gives the basis of the agriculture production serves stores the water and regulates the water cycle and it also decomposes the pollutions and filters the ground water it produces most of the clay and brick making industries it provides a foundation for building also So now let's talk about the land degradation their causes effect and control measures so what is land degradation the fertility of land support the growth and productivity of the natural resources and because of any natural or man made calamities if the fertility of land is going away or it is reducing that means we can say the land degradation is happening and what are the major causes for this there are two types of causes one is natural factor one is anthropogenic factors natural factors includes heavy rains heavy speed wind and storms natural disasters like earthquake floods and prolonged drought etc as well as expansion of deserts and soil erosion anthropogenic means man made causes and they are including mainly mining which generates lots lots of waste urbanization deforestation and excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers and finally industrial discharges and constructions of dams roads and canals so what are the causes of soil erosion so there are two things 
one is soil erosion and one is removal of the top soil by the wind high speed wind or high speed rain or water so that is soil erosion now what are the main causes of the soil erosion first is deforestation industrialization pollution flood overgrazing overgrazing means that eating of mm, the grasses by cattle if they are eating too much of grasses that is not good for the soil and soil goes away also so that is one thing another is agriculture mismanagement that means poor crop rotation excessive input of the chemicals or use of heavy machineries and finally large violent winds also causes soil erosion and what are the effects of soil erosion it decreases the productivity of the land secondly desertification of land happens and d reduction in the agricultural land at the bank of the river and deposition of the soil in the river beds and canals causing di di diversion diversion of their natural flow and hence leading to disasters so how can we control this how can we control the soil erosion there are three different options for de depending upon the slope of the land so for the milder slope we can go for two things one is reduced tillage and secondly stubble mulching so we can reduce the ch channels or the tillages or we can cover the land with the stubble so that is stubble mulching for the gentle slopes we can go for vegetative bunds or counter bunds strip cropping or counter uh, counter cultivation so what is vegetative bunds it is making bunds with the vegetables which can hold the land for little stronger with a stronger roots secondly counter cultivation is cultivating on the different levels of the land so if some part of the land is at the higher level we can grow something else over there so they can hold the land thirdly crop strip cropping strip cropping means the crops are planted in the form of strips with the, some uh, bigger crops and then some smaller crops and finally counter bunds counter bunds means making bunds with the help of some stones or muds or other things for the steeper slope we can go for directly terracing terracing means cutting the land in the form of terraces and holding the things over there there are some other methods also which can prevent the soil erosion and they are like control of overgrazing don't allow the cattle to eat too much of grasses then construction of small check dams so that water can and so that the flow of water can be regulated next is a forestation on barren land so if there are any barren land we can go for the plantation and other things prevention of excretion of rocks so we can prevent the removal of the rocks because rocks can hold the land also and finally equitable use of the water resources we can sprinkle water because dry land can go away easily with the with the wind so now let's talk about desertification so what is desertification it is the conversion of the fertile land into an infertile desert so that is d desertification conversion of fertile land into an infertile desert land is called desertification and what are the main causes they are again divided into two parts like natural factors and anthropogenic factors so in natural it can be included that very low rainfall excessive evaporation and vast difference in diurnal temperatures diurnal temperatures means daytime and nighttime temperatures so during daytime the temperature goes very high while during the night time the temperature is very low and finally the high salinity of the soils anthropogenic factor or man made factors are continuous cutting of the trees overgrazing eating of eating of the grasses by animals over irrigation too much of water and excessive plugging and excessive use of fertilizers so they are some of the causes of desertification 
what are the effects it increases the rapid soil erosion poor soil quality and unfavorable climate it also changes the climate low water table water table goes down salty and hard water comes out huge economic losses also it gives the economic losses so how can we control this just go for just go for promoting large scale plantation of tree because trees can can control the desertification changing agriculture practices and promoting dry land farming can help also development of pastures like grassy lands and control of the overgrazing will reduce the desertification and promoting equitable use of the water resources only use the requirement of required amount of the water no excess no less development of water catchment areas we must catch the water from the rain from anywhere else so these are catchment areas like lakes like ponds like other things so that was all about the land resources thank you yeah so i, I think that uh, video sort of gives us a, a good summary of what we have been doing and uh, what I liked about that, about that video is just uh, looking specifically, much as we looked at other resources, the soil resources, and why it's so important to, to, to protect the soil resources of any land. We've seen uh, what the soil horizon is made up of, the different uh, layers of the soil horizon, and how important each horizon is. And, uh, if we don't watch our soils, uh, then that means we are going to have soil erosion, we are going to have degraded soils, we are going to have desertification, and of course we are going to suffer all those other problems that go with that. Now, uh, I want us to watch another video, and I think this one is, um, I think I have a video from Kenya. Uh, just showing how some people are coping. Okay, probably the land has been degraded, the soil has been degraded, and maybe some people just don't want even to, people have moved out of such land. You know, there are things that land is so degraded that nobody wants to live there anymore because simply that land is not productive at all. We, we are going to watch a, a video on that, and this one, the, I think the case study is in, is in Kenya. And uh, we're going to see what some people are doing. And, and for me, where I want you to watch is just to inspire you, uh, to show you that you, you just can't sit back and warm yourself on the fires of degradation. You need to stand up and say, we can do something about it. And we are going to do something about it. So welcome to watch this video. So 20 years ago, this place was dry, the farm was rocky, everything was the way it could not even produce. So when I came in, these people told me that at least I should start plowing this place. So I, I made everything possible to ensure that they improve the productivity of this land. When after planting, you re return the, the trashes to the, to the soil. So we are trying to improve the soil fertility by plowing back the trashes on the on the, on the soil. One of the strategies is mulching. For example, for uh, Irish potatoes, the white potatoes, so that you can be able to conserve the moisture through mulching. And the farmers are not... is brought to this place so that it is used for to improve the soil fertility instead of leaving them on the farm. So the Fanya Jew 
is the structure which is used to improve the soil moisture by the excess runoff that comes from the upper side, it ends via the fanyaju. So this one is a fanyaju. I decided not to leave it fanyaju alone. I decided to introduce water from outside the road, the road runoff, so that it runs and then this one I am able to maintain about 120 drums per, per rainfall. So this one can be used for other things. The water is an issue. It's drip irrigation at a smaller scale for the smaller scale farmers so that they can be able to get a crop, maybe vegetables within a given smaller area because the, the parcels of land are reducing because of the pressure, uh, population pressure such that they are, the parcels have become very uneconomical. This is how my farm used to look like when I came in. And as, as per now, I, uh, the excess water which was there are not there. So this one is the gully which was from the roadside. So the excess water, the excess runoff has been swept to the lower side. This one is a Moringa tree. A Moringa tree, first, it, when it came, it was meant for goat production, feeds of the goat. Nowadays, we are using it. First, the leaves are used as vegetables. The fruits inside here, we can uh, crush. After crushing, we put in water to purify our waters. From there, it is also used as, uh, we can earn income from it because the seeds are used to crush oil, to help us have oil for uh, cooking. The alternative livelihoods, where we are promoting agroforestry, we are also advising the farmers to keep beehives so that they can be, they harvest honey and they don't put a lot of pressure to the land. At the same time, from these agroforestry trees, they, they will be harvesting honey and also get firewood. They, and the soil fertility will be improved. So you are getting, from that uh, integrated uh, farming system, you are also promoting sustainable land management. So I've brought in the, the bees, the apiary. I've bought here, I have 10 uh, apiary, the, the hives, 10 Langstroth hives. This one will improve on the production. And this is what we are trying to use to improve our productivity in this uh, dry area. So this one. so this one is an improved technology where we are trying to ensure that in one plot, when you are supposed to dig holes, you will dig about 14,000 holes. But with this one, then the two animals will help you improve only digging the furrows. After that, you will come this, from this corner, from here to here, is the averagely three feet or 90 centimeters. And our spacing this side is 90 by 60. So at least you will ensure that the animal opens for you the furrow, and then you come out with your plants, you just plant instead of digging very much. This one is the roof. The roof catchment, the little what moisture that may come from the upper side is trapped and then it's directed to this banana. The banana was dug, the, the spacing of the, the hole was three meters by three meters and three meters deep. When you have a plot, you must try and conserve this, this your farm. Conservation will include uh, fanya juice, the unplowed strip, stone walls, uh, plowing along the contours, or if that one is not possible, ensure that the little that you have, you plant trees. These trees will help you improve the environment. Uh, uh, planting of trees means, number one, you can plow, plant them on the boundary, you can plant them on the woodlot, or you can improve. And the third one is that if you have animals, we should utilize that dung from the farm, from the boma so that we pour them on the farm to improve the soil fertility. This one will improve the production, however little rain that we have because the, the, the dung sometimes tends to act as a sponge. Thank you very much. Now, uh, I think uh, you have just seen, uh, the good thing is that it's a local example of something that's happening in Kenya, Bondo. And uh, this, this farmer, it's very easy to despair when you have such land, but we can see 
how are you trying to um, to incorporate uh, sustainable land use principles to, to make sure that they are managing the land, they are conserving the soil, they are living there as a family, that's so sure. And at the same time, they're able to earn some economic benefits from whatever it is they are doing. And uh, so when we're taking care of the land and when you're taking care of, uh, of the soil and, and the water, then definitely, Definitely, if you put them together and use them sustainably, then you're going to be able to reap a harvest. It may not be like so much, but enough to, to take you through. Uh, but remember, as you continue using your land sustainably, you continue returning the, the you continue returning the, the soil fertility, if not maintaining it. You continue conserving your water, you continue planting trees, then the whole system changes over time. And once that system changes, it becomes even more productive and it's even going to continue giving more ecosystem goods and services. So, uh, as I said before, I, I want you people to watch this so that uh, even when you go back home, you're not looking at things from a very pessimistic view and saying oh this is not possible this is not possible and say oh me i'm going back to the city and seeing what i can do there there is still a lot that people can do back in the rural areas there's still a lot that we can do to even teach other people and to help them especially when it comes to land remember land is not just for you that is land is for the, the generations to come so the question is uh, what, what are we handing over tomorrow's, uh, to tomorrow's generation? What, what are we giving them? Uh, is it those degraded lands which nobody wants to stay in? Or are we managing land in such a way that they'll be able to use it and benefit from it just like we are, if not better? So let's watch the third video. I think this is a bit global. I forget, but let's, let's watch it. Can you see? To feed the world's growing population, food production has to rise 70% by 2050. This is a huge challenge in itself, but while addressing hunger and livelihoods, we simply have to protect the land at the same time. Several far-sighted initiatives have been launched in response to these concerns. Many of them target climate change too. But they all share one common denominator. That's sustainable, that's sustainable land, land management. Sustainable, sustainable land management secures, secures the productive base, base while simultaneously, simultaneously ensuring the system resilience. resilience. Safeguarding the system. Switch off your microphone, madam. And sustainable, and sustainable land management captures carbon, carbon while offering, offering opportunities, opportunities for climate, for climate change, change adaptation. Around a third of the greenhouse gases responsible for climate change sustainable land management. Sustainable land management secures the productive base while simultaneously ensuring ecosystem resilience, safeguarding water supply and biodiversity. And sustainable land management captures carbon while offering opportunities for climate change adaptation. Around a third of the greenhouse gases responsible for climate change are generated from agriculture or from land use change, including land degradation. Climate change may in turn be responsible for worse land degradation with droughts, erosive rainfall and floods. But there is another way of looking at it. Climate change stimulates responsive action Farmers are motivated to be innovative with technologies, while donors respond with new funds. This improves sustainable land management, which means more carbon is captured and climate change is mitigated. A virtuous cycle. This series presents sustainable land management practices, all of them proven in sub-Saharan Africa. Each has a role to play some very widely spread, 
others in specific locations. And these are versatile practices that can be adjusted and modified by farmers in the field. They form the building blocks of a land-based environmental adaptation strategy. But such a strategy ultimately depends on people and their skills and knowledge. That's the rationale behind this series, to make that know-how available to a wide audience in a clear and visual way. The first film features contour stone lines, a simple water harvesting system found throughout the Sahel. Based on a tradition, stone lines have been improved by farmers working together with technicians. Fania Jew terraces are the backbone of the very successful soil conservation campaign in Kenya. These robust structures are now spreading throughout the region. Gravilia robusta is a friendly foreigner, a genuinely multi-purpose agroforestry tree that's been adopted by millions of farmers in East Africa. Water harvesting from roads has been overlooked and its value undervalued. Throughout dryland Africa, farmers make use of road drainage to boost their crops. Its potential is huge. Urban agriculture thrives in Africa. Even dairy cows are kept in the heart of many cities. Milk is nutritious and profitable and a key byproduct is energy saving biogas. Zai planting pits capture runoff to boost plant growth in dry parts of the Sahel. They are at their most effective when combined with manure and set between contour stone lines. Demi-loon are a popular form of water harvesting, simple to lay out and cheap to construct. They're used for crops, trees and pasture. Agroforestry parklands have formed a protective canopy for generations in the Sahel. Shia nut trees are one of the most common species in Ghana and provide a cash crop of shea butter. Soil fertility management can be improved through adopting compost pits and through the use of strategic microdosing with fertilizers. Both techniques are taking off fast. In Niger and elsewhere, farmer managed natural regeneration of self seeding trees has led to a remarkable recovery in much-valued agroforestry species. Sustainable land management isn't only about technologies. It involves families and communities as well. Pastoralists and farmers interact in the Sahel to achieve mutual benefits. Fodder for livestock and manure for crops. Zambia provides an example of how conservation agriculture can work for small-scale farmers and is a model for the upscaling of new technology. These then are the sustainable land management in this is all work well where they're used but equally, each could be without knowledge and know-how. Farmers cannot learn about the options available to them. Here are some of the best, explained in simple terms, supported by the testimonies of the users themselves. <laughs> Ah, 
Bye. I think we agree that, uh, that that is inspirational. Uh, we started with Kenya, now we've got um, an overview of what is happening in the rest of Africa, especially the Sub-Saharan Africa, which is, tends to be dry. And uh, what the farmers are doing, what people are doing to, to continue, especially to ensure that their, their land continues to produce and they continue to have food, they are food secure, they'll not be going out in begging bowls and saying we do not have food. So, uh, and, and I'm sure you have come across some of those sustainable land management um, uh, initiatives uh, in various lessons, maybe some of you even seen in Kenya, you've seen the Fanyaju terraces. Uh, in, um, I think during President, the late President Moy's time, there was a lot of, actually, I think the, the government spent a lot of money and put a lot of focus on soil conservation measures, water conservation measures. That's when we had all the building of the terraces, the Fanyaju terraces, there were others called Fanyachini terraces. They built gabions to, you know, those stone walls they are talking about. Uh, and the and people planted trees. There was that. Uh, there were even patriotic songs on why you should plant trees. Uh, I remember them. And and all of this was just to educate the public on the need of soil conservation, water conservation, for the sake of sustainability, and uh, in making sure that, in fact, by that time, even climate change issues were not a big deal. You hardly hear anybody talking about climate change, but uh, soil and water conservation were a big deal. So there was a lot of government effort, community efforts. Okay, still don't know, but I think if you still look at parts of Ukambani, you still see the terraces. Some of them have maintained them really nicely. And uh, to make sure you continue benefiting from the land, you conserve your soil and you also conserve your water. And, and then that land, the future generations can can use them. So let's look at the next video. I'm trying to see if it's on foot. I don't know what to do with that. Just a minute. So yeah. So okay, let's look at the global commons first.
Land and soil are the life of all of us, but the resource land is limit change, reduction of animal and plant species, and by inefficient farming. In the way we managed our landscapes in the last decades, we destroyed various ecosystem functions and consequently put our Our task thus is to produce functioning. Ralph Zeppelt is head of one of the biggest global research projects on sustainable land management at the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research in Leipzig. The program consolidates research results from 12 different regions in the world. One of the key questions of the project is whether and how enough food could be produced in the future. According to recent forecasts, the Earth will need to support 10 billion people by the end of the century. This balancing act between sustainable land use and sufficient food production is possible. Measured in calories, for instance, after all, we produce about double of the food that the world actually needs. Twelve research teams worldwide investigated practical solutions to the greatest challenges. How can we use land in a sustainable way? How could we promote biodiversity? And what effects does climate change have on local systems? One example is the Kalunda Steppe in southwest Siberia. In the 60s, the region was said to be the breadbasket of the Soviet Union, but drought, depleted soil and wind erosion shrank the crops more and more on the 420,000 square kilometre plain. German and Russian scientists developed a sustainable land use management concept with the Kalunda project. For four years they cultivated and evaluated test fields at three locations on the steppe. With less use of soil and specific crop rotation, the team soon achieved a significantly higher harvest while at the same time consuming fewer resources. Another example, rice farming at Ifugao in the Philippines. The insect known as the brown plant hopper causes large crop losses in the rice fields of the Philippines and Vietnam. In the project Legato, scientists found that insecticides are counterproductive because the poison rarely affects the insect but instead wipes out its natural enemies, for example, spiders. Rice farming that supports the natural enemies of the pest, however, can result in much higher yields. An important aspect of all the projects was the participation of local stakeholders and the scientists worked to foster a consciousness of the problem among the local population. Here it achieved exemplary results. Vietnamese television broadcasts instructional videos and sketches on fighting the pest in the fields. For the practical use of farmers worldwide, a book was published featuring examples of best practice in the area of sustainable land management. This information is also available on an app. The scientists in the 12 projects generate a huge amount of data. At the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research in Leipzig, this data is gathered and assessed. In the GeoPortal, findings are illustrated for the public. From a global perspective, the project brought to light many new findings but also scientifically underlined some worrying trends. Our findings point out that we could not increase the rates of crop production very much more. The analysis shows that quite a few important goods like maize, rice, wheat, fish, meat or milk already passed peak grade years of the highest production in the recent years. The usual response is to extend agricultural area to farm more and more land. But this comes with tremendous loss of biodiversity and is in fact no option. Humankind must not, contrary to the accepted opinion, define new areas for farming. The growing world population could be fed without problems up to the year 2050 if we decide together to change diets and reduce meat consumption. Besides the fact that we need to reduce harvest losses and need to reduce waste, the global outcome of food could be waste with multiple crops by about 
Moreover, crop losses could be minimized with ecological engineering, which we define as to manage ecosystems in a way that the productivity of farming keeps stable and sustainability rises. This global research project on sustainable land management lasted for seven years. Finally, the core result of all research findings is that to protect ecosystem functions and to sustain biodiversity, it is not enough to avoid the loss of natural land and to promote conservation areas. No, it is much smarter active to use the demand of biodiversity and can mitigate climate change cleverly instead of opting for technical solutions, such as, for example, expensive insecticides or energy demanding fertilizers. Okay, uh, now, so I think that that last one is on, uh, it talks about climate smart agriculture. And, and one key thing that was mentioned there that, uh, especially when they were talking about Siberia and uh, the area in Siberia that was, um, that was the, the bread basket of the Soviet Union. Remember that, yeah, Siberia was under the Soviet Union. So they say that uh, what happened after some time, the productivity of that land went down. And uh, yeah, just due to so many things, anthropogenic and also uh, due to, to, okay, natural causes, the fertility of the soil went down. And what is it that normally, naturally what happens in such cases is that we tend to say, okay, we still need more food from this land. Excuse me. And we do not have the food. So let's extend the area which we are farming. Instead of farming 10 acres, let's farm 20 acres. Okay, just because we want to continue getting the productivity that we used to get. So the danger of this is that uh, you, when you do this, then you, there's, there's loss of biodiversity if it's a forest you're clearing there's loss of forest resources and the associated ecosystem services and uh, of course you open up the soil to degradation to soil erosion the water you expose it to excess um, uh, evaporation and of course you follow the route that you followed in the first patch of land so I think in this project, it was a research project, and what they, they, they found out that uh, there are better ways. If you could go for climate smart agriculture, uh, agriculture like, and, and use some of those techniques that we saw in the previous, uh, the previous video on Sub-Saharan Africa, then uh, you, you are able to, uh, to, well, up your productivity or even sustain it meaning that year by year by year, you are able to, to, to retain your productivity at that, at that, uh, at that level. So uh, as I said, this is, for me, this, this uh, lecture is supposed to be a reflective lecture. And right now I want us to go into groups. I can see quite a number of people have left. Uh, is Esther Hayward in? Esther Hayward, are you in? So Esther Hayward is not in. I am in, Madam. Yeah, so when I call you, respond immediately. Ian Moranga? In, Madam. In. Kamau Mbudia? Is Kamau Mbudia in? Okay, he has left. Kenga Nyevu? Is Kenga Nyebu in? Um, yes, I'm in. Kirimin Katha? Yes. Okay, Malele yes. Kisome? Uh, Michael I'm Faris? In. Ntenya Jacinta? I'm in. Ntenya Jacinta, okay. Ogega Musiara? Uh, okay, I'm in. Yes. <laughs> Omwenga? Mwenga Derek. I mean, I mean, I mean. Oh, we know. 
Amen. Ok, Pita Duo. Is Pita Duo in? Pita, are you in? Ok, so <laughs> it looks like those are the people that are in. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I, I want us to go into groups and, and hold this discussion for about the next 15 minutes. Uh, in our groups and make sure you get into your group and I'm going to choose anyone to, to present. So please don't give me excuses. Don't, 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 because I'm not going to take them in at all. Uh, let me see what I can have. Um, about three groups so that I don't okay fine at least three groups are okay so we are going to have three groups for the next 15 minutes and this is what I want you to discuss uh, I want you to as a group now this, this will be up to the group decide or decide to discuss an area in Kenya a region in Kenya that is very um, uh, is very challenged in terms of uh, just the land uses and uh, the place has very degraded soils. It's a dry area, very little, uh, there's very little maybe rainfall. And as a group, uh, according to those methods that we have looked at, do you think those areas can be rehabilitated? Do you think those people in those areas can start living sustainably? And you can, we have looked at all those case studies and things that people are doing all over the world to try and make sure that the land, because without food, what are we going to do? Uh, we are all fighting for food security. The other day, I just reading um, uh, a newspaper article yesterday and well, I'm saying Africa, Africa, we are depending so much on food. We are supposed to be, to be right there, but we are suffering food insecurity. But our agricultural production is so low. It is so low. Uh, and I want you to think about Kenya. How much land is just at times lying idle or is degraded and nobody is farming it? I, I can give an example of where I come from. In some when we have lots of land. Uh, that could be productive, that could be used sustainably, but nothing is happening. It's just lying there year in, year out, and yeah, 10 to pounds say we don't have food and that kind of thing. What, so choose an area as a group and discuss that area and discuss some of the measures. You sincerely think that if some of these measures are put in place, uh, so someone can achieve sustainability. Don't be afraid to discuss your area. And, and maybe also, if it's your area, just say, what are people doing and what are people not doing that they could do to start making a difference? Remember, you're, you're fourth years, you're getting out of college. So it's no longer uh, uh, to the teacher working with you. The kind of knowledge you have gained, how are you going to apply it to bring societal discipline? So, Let's go to the rooms. It's not for those who are stepping out. I'm making, I'm making sure I know everybody who is in the room. So it is part of the lesson. So stick in and let's see what comes out of this. Okay, so I'm opening the rooms. Which area are we talking about now? Can we talk about Kisi? Kisi is very fertile in what you want to panda kila kitu. So, pali atwezi ongelelea. Hakuna, hakuna angashida uko.
Kwa sasa ni come up with an area ama tuangelele example ni ya karo. Right.
Kwa watu hapa wanaongea kwa ile amani simu yangu iko na shida. Kita Duo, you're supposed to be in breakout too. I don't know what you're doing in the main call. Asamaji. Siapo kwa chat tu mbudhi ya meandika trukana. So, you look at trukana. Sasa inyo wanyewa msemi content. Nani mnataka atafute. Nkwa nchato kila mtu wa ipe. Tutafuta nini kwa so just dielewa sinyambi tu please
Okay, let's wait for a few others and then we can listen to some presentations. Okay, so I think we can have group, there are only three groups. So let's have group one presenting. What area did you choose and what would you, what are the problems and what would you recommend? Yeah, in group one, uh, we picked uh, Trukana. Trukana. Trukana is one of the uh, dry areas in Kenya. So it is, uh, it has been, uh, it has, uh, it has, it's a desert area basically, so the conditions are very tough over there. Um, in the methods we, we choose uh, we, to see that if uh, Tukana can be rehabilitated, we saw one method was uh, stone lines, right? So along the sand dunes, because there are areas in Tukana which have uh, sand dunes, we can uh, put the the stone lines, the stone mantles of about uh, hill ranges, the height of hill ranges, so that that when it rains, water can be stored as much as, uh, as, and people can harvest it to use it for irrigation purposes. And then uh, stone corrected, but there's there's a there's a we saw even uh, there's a place in the video they are play, they were dug in small I think small holes. Then they are putting uh, manure those areas which were desert. So we dig the holes, we put the manure, and uh, we incorporate with the plant. We see that area will uh, come back to life again. So that's what we so two two methods will work best in uh, Trukana. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Group one, group two. Group two, who was in group two? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead and make your presentation. Uh, so, uh, fortunately, or un unfortunately, uh, we also uh, were discussing Trukana. Um, from the uh, internet search, you see that um, the area is fit for agriculture, only that um, rain, uh, rain is a problem. So <clears throat> now we've been looking at uh, some of the things they're not doing, doing right. Uh, so oh, much of much of the efforts have been done both by the county government and the government as well as the international uh, donors. So, uh, for instance, you, uh, if you can remember, there was, um, uh, I think, uh, a well discovered in Trukana, but when they went to sample that water and um, uh, look, uh, look if that water is... Um, uh, necessary for agriculture or simply human consumption, the the water was not fit for humans as well as 
agriculture. So one of the methods we can say is uh, uh, probably if there are if there are uh, efficient technologies and uh, much investment uh, on a serious note, quote unquote, uh, I think that can work. But uh, so far, the efforts have been uh, tremendous. We are seeing Trukana now uh, coming up at least when I to grow food, I'm a mandizi and all that. Yeah, that's all for, for group two. Uh, thank you, group two, for, for your presentation. Uh, actually, the the water, the water in uh, Trukana that was discovered, two, two aquifers were discovered, and uh, it is estimated that these uh, these aquifers uh, is able to supply Kenya. It has 250 billion cubic meters of water. And you think currently Kenya uses about 3 billion cubic meters a year. So do your math. And it shows that this water can, can sustain the whole of Kenya for 70 years. Uh, I, I, I'm not seeing, I haven't looked at anything to do with the quality of the water. And uh, yeah, but I think it would be interesting to see because I don't think there's anything written about the quality of the water. But uh, this is, this is uh, yeah, but I remember even when that announcement was made on TV and probably if Nino, if the water is of good quality or if there's anything they can do if the water is not good quality, then this, uh, this water can really, really be used to transform Trukana, really just like overhaul the whole place. Yeah, but even having said that, if the necessary uh, soil and water management uh, systems are not put in place, then uh, we'll just uh, end up to where we, we began. So thank you, group two. Let's have group three. And then we'll have Mondiko, um, I think, so group three, go ahead. Okay, for group three, we measured on Wajia, and we found that Wajia is in the northeastern part of Kenya. It experiences, it, it is in a hot and dry climate, and it has a lot of problems, such as uh, a lot of problems as, as of Trukana, Trukana area. So what is this that you are supposed to do? First of all, we saw that, that we need to do a forestation to bring back the vegetation cover, so as to enhance from the synthesis, and thus bring on rain. Uh, there, need, there also needs to be a water reservoir. When it rains, we need to fetch, the, the water should be tapped and fetched into dams or such a thing. The third thing we saw is about conservation agriculture. We saw that uh, this place should also plant uh, drought resistant crops and cover crops. Uh, the area is a, a pastoralist community and it has a lot of livestock, but the pasture is finished. So what is this that is supposed to be done? The area has to do this, this stocking. People should be advised on this stocking and uh, the adoption of other livelihood methods. Uh, sustainable there should be sustainable water use because water in the in the northeastern part of Kenya is is a finite resource. So this water that is available should be used sustainably. Uh, I think those are the five key points we measured, and also also to to add on, the place is insecure. There there is insecurity, and insecurity when conflicts arise. They are directed to natural resources. Destruction is done on the land. So we should advocate for peace, peace and harmony, so as to curb all these issues. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you, Group 3. I think that is true what you've said. Whenever we have instability, when ha whenever we have insecurity, then we know that our natural resources are in trouble. But at times, let me tell you the truth, at times, uh, you can imagine if there's peace and instability in an area and people are moving away, and uh, what does that mean? The land is not being worked, the forests are not being cut, fish are not being overfished. So what do they do? They recover. So, and this is, uh, you know, this is diabolical because this has been one of the issues that uh, when it comes to natural resource management, and especially because we know most of the degraders are human beings. So when the human beings are de <laughs> destabilized and at times they even have to move away from an area, uh, the area somehow sort of just recovers. In the Sudan, in South Sudan, when there was all that turmoil and all that, all those difficult times and people moved away, people went to refugee camps, they left their homes, what happened? The forest recovered, the, the sea, the, the lakes recovered, the natural ecosystem, the, the, the bushes grew back and uh, the habitat for animals was improved. So at times it's, um, it's interesting how these things work. And same, I think, to, to Somalia, when uh, in Somalia, when, when there was war in Somalia was very, very unstable. You can imagine even activities like fishing were not taking place. So what happened? There was, uh, the, the, the fisheries got time to recover. I mean, there was not really much, uh, much harvesting taking place. And therefore, the natural fisheries were able to recover. So, uh, so there is uh, quite a lot. There, there is quite a lot that we can learn from these uh, natural occurrences and even induced occurrences. And this would help us to know how to take care of our land. Now, I don't know where the rest of your classmates are because I'm just about to give instructions for CAT. People are not there, and I'm not going to repeat them. They know we had a class today, and they, they, they don't turn up. Can, can you call your, 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 whatever, your classmates? Because I'm going to put this, whatever, on the wall. So just tell them to, to come back. And I don't know why they keep disappearing, too, honestly. So as I write the cards, uh, for to be handed in next week on Monday, uh, tell them to come back. I think I'm, I've been so too soft on you guys. Uh, let me share so that uh, as I write, you can also write because I'm not re I'm not uh, repeating this. Everybody knew they're supposed to be in class. I think you've been playing a game of hide and seek.
So, I think I've given the card, I've shown you what I want, and uh, the card should be given handed in next Wednesday. Send everything to the class rep, I've given all instructions. And then the class rep will send to me. So class rep, you can make sure you send the message to the rest of your classmates. I will not take any excuses. I will not take any reasons or explanations. So uh, in your emails right now, I'm just going to send you the, the SMR409 card. So the SMR409 should be handed in on Monday. The SMR 408 should be handed in on Wednesday. Is there any question? Okay, no questions. So have a lovely evening.